Yam Tav, welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Today is the 25th day of the 10th month of the year 5781. It's also the 11th day of January 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. So we're going to be doing the part four of the expository teaching of the Acts of the Apostles. And again, we're starting in chapter 13, and we're, we're going to go through 16. We're going to keep it four chapters. We don't know exactly how long that'll take, but we hopefully that'll take a, about an hour. So, i got to wear a CPAP machine at night. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. You may not care about that at all, but I do have a CPAP machine, and it's rubbed a spot on my forehead. So I got a Band-Aid on my forehead a week or two ago, or maybe a week ago even, I, you saw I might have had a band-aid on my nose. My glasses were broken. I needed something to cushion. My glasses were digging in on the, the bridge, was digging into my nose. So that's why all the band-aids, nobody's beating me up or anything like that, okay? But today, again, is the uh, 25th day of the 10th month of the year 5781 on the Gregorian calendar. And it's the 11th day of January 2022. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. That was on the sacred calendar, the first one. This is the Gregorian calendar, 11 1, I mean, the 11th day of January 2022. So I'm going to stand and face the temple towards where the temple was. Now, there's no temple there now today. Our bodies are the temple. Don't be confused by that. But we're going to face where the Father, Yahuwah, chose to place his name there in Jerusalem. So we'll. There's a lot more to it. If you're interested in that, watch Jerusalem turning towards the place where our Father chose to place His name there. That's a teaching that I have on YouTube. So go to Philadelphia Assemblies at YouTube.com if you're interested in why we turn towards Jerusalem when we open in prayer. Now, I pray continually. I don't always turn towards Jerusalem, but I do that out of respect, and I also know that our, Mas our Mashiach is going to come down and put his feet on the Mount of Olives, and when he comes, he's going to be coming like the lightning coming out of the east. So that's why we face east, no other reason. Okay, so let's go ahead and open in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. Father, we ask that you would continue to Give us understanding on a day-by-day -day basis, Father. We know we have not got all truth, and we don't believe that anyone walking here on earth at this time has all truth. Father, we ask that we would continue to be taught by your Ruach HaKadosh, your Holy Spirit of promise, and that we would be uh, faithful su subjects of our Messiah and continue to walk in the Spirit and not after the flesh. Again, we pray for all those that are sick, whether it be for this, from this plague that's upon the whole earth or for those for any other reason, ailment that there might be. Father, we pray for that your hedge of protection would remain around your believers, Father, and you'd protect them from all illnesses and mostly from the evil one. Father, we ask that that hedge remain around those that have been called, those that are being called, and those that are yet to be called, Father. But you know who they are that are going to be called. Father, again, we ask that you give it, send your Ruach to give those comfort that have lost loved ones, Father, to give them the peace that passes understanding, and again, to teach us all things. Father, give us an open heart and an open mind as we go to the book of the Acts of the Apostles, and Father, we ask that your Ruach, your Spirit, teach us all things. And again, we ask all these things in your precious Son, Yahushua's name, Amen need to get a it's not we don't have any heat in here so it's a little cold but it's not as cold as it was on Shabbat or Sabbath and that's when I brought the last message so here we go chapter 13 and verse 1 now there were in the church or in the ecclesia or the congregation be the same word of the most high it's talking about through our Mashiach our Messiah that was at Antioch that's the congregation that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and, and, and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrenia 
of Cyrene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Sha Shaul, or Saul. Verse 12. As they minister or served to Yahuwah and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, or spoke to them and said, Separate me, Barnabas and Shaul, or Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And we know that he was called to go to the, to the nations especially, but it was identified. Let's look, let, let me look back real quick of where that was identified, and we'll go over it again. He wasn't just called to the Gentiles. There it is. Your way, for he is chosen, Shaul, he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the nations or the Gentiles and kings and the men of Israel. Okay, so he was also called to the nations, to kings and to Israel. So it's the same as Paul, you know, he wasn't just called, I mean not Paul, the same as Peter. He wasn't just called to the 12 tribes of Israel, but he was specifically called to go to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, in Shaul, being of the tribe of Benjamin, was called first to the nations, then to kings, because he testified before kings, and also to uh, the, the men or the sons of Israel. And again, that was in uh, Acts chapter 9, I believe, or it might be 10. Yep, nope, Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Okay, Acts chapter 9, 15, where it identifies who he was called to. So he's saying here to separate, separate me, the Holy Spirit told them, separate out for me, it just says separate me, Barnabas and Shaul for the work that I have called them, okay, which would be number one to the nations. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth, by the Holy Spirit, that's who they were sent forth by, departed unto Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Verse 5. And when they were, and, and when they were at Solomus, Solomus, they preached the word of Elohim, Theoi in the Greek. Okay? Theoi in the Greek. Let me get that one again so we can get accustomed to see what these words look like in Greek and in English and 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 and, the, and, it, and it, that's theos I showed you the wrong card it's on the bottom of course theoe is this word right here this is the word that said that that says what we just read there okay in verse 5 it says the word of elohim or theoe in Greek okay got that one so that's why I use in that. It's because that's actually the word it is in the Greek. He, so again, and when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of Elohim in the synagogues of the Yehudim. And they had also Johan to teach, their helper. Okay? Verse 6, And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, Paphos they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet or teacher, a, 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 one of the tribe of Yehuda, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Okay? Verse 7, which was with the deputy, or, or the pro, uh, or the pro counselor but the deputy of the county, I mean of the country, Sergius Paulus, a wise man, who, call, who called for Barnabas and Shaul and desired to hear the word of Theoe again, or Elohim. We'll pick that one up and show you one more time since we were kind of clumsy about that before. Okay, verse 8. And Elamus, the sorcerer, and this is in parentheses now all the way, uh, let's see, where's the, okay, just for one sentence there. But Elamus the sorcerer, for so is, and this is added, for so is his name by interpretation, the sorcerer, opposed his name 
I mean, opposed them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith or from the truth. Then Shaul, who, was, who is also called Paul, and that's added, filled with the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him, or fixed his eyes on him, on Elamus, and said, O full of all deceit and all mischief, you child, are you been of Ha Satan, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to corrupt the right ways of Elohim? This Lord here is plural of Elohim. Verse 8, I mean verse 11. And now behold, the hand of Yahuwah is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun. For, t for a time, and immediately there fell on him a mist and a, and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Verse 12, Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the teaching of Elohim. Verse 13, Now when, when Shaul, or Paul, and his company set sail from Paphos, Paphos, they came to Perga, Perga, to Pamphylia, and Johann departed from them, returning to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Sidia and went into the synagogue on the, on the Sabbath day and sat down, and after the reading of the Torah and the prophets, so the Tanakh or the Old Testament, the rulers of the synagogue sent into them, saying, You men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Now, he was giving them the opportunity to speak. Then Shaul, or Paul, stood up and beckoned with his hand, with his hand, said, Men of Israel, you that fear Theon. Okay, let's get that word so we can look at it again. Theon. That's this word right here in, your, in a Greek interlinear. That's what it looks like on the top there in Greek. Then that's what it would be spelled in English. And that strictly means the Most High. So let's read it again. Then Shaul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and you that fear the Most High, give guidance. The next one is the Theos. Okay. Theos by itself just means Eloah is equal to Eloah. But when you put the in front of it, it's then it's the Theos, which is equal to that YHWH, and that's what there is in the Greek right here. So it said, so that you, you should read that. And Yahuwah of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a powerful hand powerful arm brought he them he brought them out of it out of the land of Egypt verse 18 and about the time of 40 years endured he their behavior in the wilderness so he put up with their behavior and their their uh, unrighteousness or their uh, iniquity their lawlessness for 40 years in the wilderness Verse 19, And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Chana, he divided their land to them by lot. Okay, so he separated the land out by their uh, tribes to each one of them, each tribe a certain portion of land. Verse 20, And after that, he gave to them judges about the space for of 450 years until Samuel the prophet and afterward, they desired a king, and Yahuwah gave them Shaul, the son of Kishmoth, a, of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. So talking about King Saul or King, king Shaul. Verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them Dawud, King David, or King Dawud, to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found Dawud, the son of Jesse, 
a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. In other words, he'll keep all my commandments. Do what I tell him. Verse 23. Of this man's descendants or offspring has Yahuwah, according to his promise, raised up unto Israel a Savior or Deliverer, Yahushua. Verse 24. When Yohan had first been first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So in other words, uh, Johann the Immerser or John the Baptist, as it would read in the King James, you know, he came first and preached repentance to all the people and baptism by water. Verse 25, as Johann fulfilled his course or his task, he said, who, who do you think I am? I am, he, and he said, I am not he, but behold, there comes one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to untie. See, Johann wasn't the one that inherited that position. He wasn't son of Dawid, okay, in the flesh. There, he, he just wasn't, okay? Verse 26, and, he, and now this, again, Shaul preaching, he says, Men and brethren, Ben are sons of the stock of Abraham, and whoever among you fears the mighty one, no, fears Theon, I'm sorry, Theon, the Most High, this one right here, okay, that's what, that's it, what, it, what it says here, any of you that fear Theon, or the Most High, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, they didn't know the Most High, and they only dealt with the Ruach, and they didn't obey that hint of his spirit either, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have filled them in condemning him, fulfilled them in condemning him. Just like they said, the prophets said they would. Okay? They fulfilled the prophets. And, and it, again, any of you that think the first day of the week is that, remember it says, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read. When were they read? Every Sabbath day. That's every Saturday to, well, as far as we're concerned today. Okay? So every Sabbath day they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Now I know there's some of you out there that think that the Sabbath day is not set on the weekly cycle. They, they say it's on, that's a Gregorian calendar. That's got nothing to do with the Gregorian calendar. If you look back, you'll find out that the weekly cycle has never been changed. Now that the, the uh, number of days in a month and the number of days in a year has been changed several times, okay? Because they're not going by God's calendar. They're going by either the Julian calendar or the Gregorian calendar. Okay, so those things are not the same, but the rotation of the weekly Sabbath has not been changed. And, and I see nothing in the Tanakh at all or the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah that would say that it was ever changed from that original rotation. Matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it says that, you know, as our father rested, we still rest in the same. It was finished from the foundations of the world never was changed doesn't tell you that the sabbath was started when they started the the, uh, the when they when the moon and the stars and the sun the count actually started from the beginning when there was no moon and stars and there wasn't any moon to be there to set the days of the week until the fourth day of creation so how in the world would that somehow be set by the on the lunar calendar and the leviticus 23 also says that on top of that, the Leviticus 23 sets the seventh day Sabbath apart because when it talks about the Passover and all the rest of them, it says these are set in their seasons. It doesn't say that about the seventh day Sabbath at all. So if they're not set in their seasons, they're not going by the calendar. That's my opinion. I've studied that. I mean, I don't think, you know, because I believe they're in error that that makes them you know, condemned by any means, but I don't agree with that rotating or lunar Sabbath. If you want to see all more about what, what, I, what we believe about the lunar Sabbath, look at lunar Sabbath on Philadelphia Assemblies at youtube.com. That's 
we'll break, we break it down very well there. Let's go to verse 28. And though they found no cause or no reason of death in him, Pilate didn't, yet desired they Pilate, or Israel desired that Pilate, that he should be slain. Pilate didn't decide that. The children of Israel did. Verse 29, And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, by hanging him on a tree, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the tomb. But the Theos, or Yahuwah, but Yahuwah raised him from the dead. Now, Yahuwah didn't come down there and do it. He used his Ruach, HaKadosh, or his spirit. Matter of fact, the scripture says that it was the, his spirit that raised him from the dead, the Holy Spirit. First, he says, he says, but Yahweh, Yahweh or Yahuwah raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up from him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto, all, unto the people. That's the ones that witnessed him and saw him. They are the witnesses of the Messiah. Verse 32. And we declare unto you good news or good tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers by the Theos or Yahuwah or Yahweh, Yahuwah hath fulfilled the same unto us, their sons, or Ben, in that he was raised, that he raised up Yahushua again, as it is written in the second psalm. Thou art my son this day, have I begotten you. Psalm 2, verse 7. And as he as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, because he didn't suffer corruption. That's why he was raised on at the end of the third day. Just long enough to everyone to know that he was dead. He said on this wise, or on this on this uh, topic. I will give you the sure mercies of Dawood. And, and that's quoting Isaiah 55, 3. Therefore, he says also in another psalm, Psalm 16, 10, that you shall not suffer your holy one, your set apart one, to see corruption. For Dawood, after he had served his own generation by the will of Theoe or Elohim, Theoe or Elohim, okay? Okay, fell on sleep and was laid into his fathers and saw corruption. So David was in his tomb to this day, according to the first, the second chapter of Act, and also here. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of Elohim, his own generation by the will of Elohim, he fell asleep, or he died, and was laid unto his fathers, and saw corruption, decay. Verse 37, But he whom the Theos, or Yahuwah, raised again, saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, because he's that sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. And by him, our Mashiach, our Messiah, all that believe are justified from all things, not by their works, but by his death and his blood, for which you could not be justified by the Torah of Moshe. Now that doesn't mean that the Torah belongs to Moshe. Moshe was, or Moses was the lawgiver at that time, and he was the mediator of that first covenant. Messiah is the mediator of the new or the second covenant. Verse 40, Beware therefore that it might come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold you despisers, and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. That man he's talking about is, is our Messiah, Yahushua. And that's Habakkuk 1.5. That, that's quoting there. And when the Yehudim was gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles, or the nations, begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. Not Sunday, the next Sabbath day. Verse 43. Now when the congregation 
same word that they translate ecclesia or church, other places. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and the religious converts, proselytes, followed Shaul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of Elohim, Again, Theoe in the Greek, which equals Elohim. Verse 44, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Elohim. But when the Yehudim saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy that, they had all, that all these people were coming to hear Shaul speak and spake against or contradicted those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming, denying the Holy Spirit. That's what they were doing. Verse 46, Then Shaul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It is necessary that the word of Elohim should first have been spoken to you. Talking about Israel. Okay, the physical seed. But seeing you put it from you, or didn't accept it, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the nations. Okay? That didn't mean that the Israelites that heard the truth didn't come, but it's saying they're not going to waste their time on people that are not listening, not accepting. Okay? And we shouldn't either. That's why Yahushua told His disciples when He sent them out, if they don't hear you, shake the dust off your sandals. That wasn't just an insult. That's just moving on. Okay, going to people that will hear the truth. So, for I saw, so, for so hath Yahuwah, Y-H-W-H, commanded us, saying, I have sent you to the light, to be a light of the Gentiles, or the nations, that you should be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And this is quoting Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. So, even in Isaiah, it was saying he was going to go out to the nations. And in his house of prayer, all over the prophets, was going to be a, a house of prayer for all nations, not just the physical seed. Okay? And when the nations, or the Gentiles, heard this, they were glad and praised the word of Elohim. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Because they had to be called or they couldn't come. They were ordained are chosen to eternal life. Verse 49, And the word of Elohim was published throughout the region. But the Jews, or the Yehudim, Jews is not really a good translation, stirred up the devout and honorable women and chief men of the city and raised persecution against Shaul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their districts. Verse 51, But they shook off the dust of their feet Remember, just like they were, just like Messiah said against them, and came to Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. See, that Holy Spirit is what it's all about. If you don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't know the truth, and you're not going to have salvation. Verse fourteen. And came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Yehudim. And spake that a great multitude, both of, Yehu, of the Yehudim and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up, or Yehudim, stirred up the nations, or the Gentiles, or the Greeks, and made their minds bitter against the brethren. Verse 3, Long time, therefore, stayed they, speaking boldly in Elohim, which gave testimony unto the word of His grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands, or actually by the Holy Spirit that was anointing them. Verse 4, But the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Yehudim and part of, with the apostles. That's not much different today, is it? And when there was an assault made both of the, of the nations, or, of the, or the Greeks here, and also of the Yehudim, with their rulers to use them wrongfully and to stone them. They knew about it and fled into Lystria and Derbe, cities of Lysonia, and into the region that lies all around. Verse 7, And there they preached the gospel, 
or the good news. The bezor in Hebrew, the bezor. Verse 8, And there sat a certain man at Lasteria, weak in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Shaul speak, who steadfastly or intently listening to him and, and looking upon him at the same time and feeling that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up right on your feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Shaul had done, now Shaul would have told you he didn't do it. Okay? It was the Ruach HaKadosh, the Spirit of the Most High, in him that did, that did it. Lifted up their voices, saying in the speech, Lysonia, the Elohim have come down to us in the likeness of men. And they call Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Verse 13, Then the priest of, Juniper, of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and were willing and were willing to be sacrificing with the people. Verse 14, Which when the apostle Barnabas and Shaul heard of it, they tore their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. Here's where they're going to give the Most High the glory here. And saying, Sirs, why do you these things? Why do you do these things? We also are men of like feelings with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these worthless things unto the living Theon or the Most High. Turn into the living, the Most High, which made the Shamayim and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past permitted all nations to walk in their own ways. Saying, and before this, it was okay. Verse 17, Nevertheless, once you're called, you can't do that. He left not, he left not himself without witnesses, in that he did good and gave us rain from the Shamayim, or the heavens, and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with, good, with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not sacrificed unto them. Verse 19, And there came there certain of the Yehudim from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Shaul, drew, out, drew him out of the city, thinking he had been dead. However, as the disciples stood, round, uh, stood around him, he stood up and came into the city, and the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel, or the Bezor, to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystria, and to Iconium, and to Antioch, confirming the souls, or the individual, the, 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 this is not talking about some memorial being, the individuals of the disciples, and encouraging them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Theoe, or Elohim, again, this word here. Okay? Hmm. Ah, I lost my spot. Just going to have to bear with me a minute. Okay, verse 23. And when they had ordained them, elders in every ecclesia, Okay, congregation, and had prayed with fasting, they condemned them to the master on whom they believed. And that master is talking about Master Yahushua. Okay, verse 24, And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word of, in Perga, they went down unto Atelia. Verse 26, and there sailed to Antioch. And from there they had been recommended, or they had been from, from there to, uh, they had been delivered, 
<laughs> to the grace of Theoe, or Elohim, for the work which they had accomplished. And when they were come and had gathered the congregation together, they announced all that the Theos, or Yahuwah, had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the nations, or to the Gentiles. The, and these were Greeks at this time that he's talking about. But anyone that's not of Israel, of the bloodline of Israel, is a Gentile. Okay, It doesn't have anything to do with just being white and skinned. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Verse chapter 15. And certain men, which came down from Yehuda, taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moshe, you cannot be saved. And that's not true. Okay? If you're compelled to be circumcised, circumcised circumcision avails much. If you're not compelled, then it, it's not going to give you salvation. Okay, and that's what they're saying here. You can't get salvation without being circumcised. That's not true. That's getting the cart in front of the horse. Okay, you don't get circumcised to get salvation. You get because you get salvation, you may be compelled to be circumcised. Verse two: When therefore Shaul and Barnabas had no small dissension or disagreement and debate with them. They determined that Shaul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and the elders about this question. And being sent on their way by the ecclesia, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the nations. In other words, telling them that they're being converted. And they, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the congregation and of the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that Yahuwah had done with them. Okay? Verse 5, But those, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the, the, the Torah of Moshe. Okay, the right rulings of Moshe. And the apostles and elders came together to consider of this matter. Okay, and they're going to answer this. Now, and I'm going to explain this thoroughly so we don't get this out of context. He's not saying the Torah is done away with. He said they don't, he's not saying they don't have to keep the Torah. He says they need to be convicted to do it because keeping the law is not going to save you. And that's the truth. Verse 6, And the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter stood up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago Yahuwah made a choice among us that the nations by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And Peter's the one saying this here. And verse 8, and the, the and then the Theos which know or Yahuwah which knows the hearts and bear them witness gives them the Holy Spirit, okay, even as he did unto us. So putting no difference between Jew and Gentile. Okay, no difference whatsoever. And put no difference, what it, listen to what he's saying, and there's no difference between Jew or Gentile once you're converted. And if you're not converted, you're not part of the commonwealth of Israel, doesn't matter if you're a natural seed or not, because you have to be grafted back in too. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So, that's certainly not saying that the Torah is done away for them. Okay? Now therefore, why test you, Theon, why, why do you test the Most High to put a yoke or a burden upon the neck of the disciples Okay, because they're going out and preaching the bizarre or the gospel, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear or stand. You can't start them out on the Torah. Now listen to what's being taught here. But we believe that through the grace of Master or Master Yahushua, the Anointed One, or the Mashiach, or the Messiah, we will be saved even as they. No difference. It's the same for them as it is for the Gentiles. Verse 12, Then all the multitude was quiet, 
and gave audience to Barnabas. So they listened to what Barnabas was saying. And Paul declaring what miracles and wonders Yahuwah or Yahweh had worked among the nations by them. Okay? Again, it was the Holy Spirit did that. Okay? Which is Yahuwah's Spirit. Verse 13, And after they had stopped speaking, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, now this is brother of Yahushua, who was the head of the Sanhedrin at that time, that's James, answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen unto me. Listen to me. Simeon hath declared how Yahuwah at the first did visit the nations to take out of them a people for his name. At the first. How long ago is he talking there? And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. So he went to take people out from the nations before there was an Israel. That's what it's saying. Verse 16, After this I will return and will build again the temple or the tabernacle of Dawid. And I, that's not talking about a physical temp, tabernacle or temple. This is talking about the, of the lineage of Dawid because he promised, Yahuwah promised that he, there would always be one, a, 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 a descendant of Dawid that would sit on the throne which has fallen down. It had fallen down for some time. There was no king sitting over Israel at this time. Well, it, there was appointed by Rome, okay, which had nothing to do with this. And they certainly weren't of the lineage of Dawid, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. That's what he's talking about. That's, he's, and that's quoting Amos chapter 9, 11, and 12. Okay? So... This is talking about the promise that was given to Dawid about there will always be one of them sitting on the throne of Israel. And when there's not anyone sitting on the throne, it won't be of the tribe of Dawid. Verse 17. And it says, That the rest of the men might seek after the Kupion, okay, or the Most High, and all the nations upon whom my name is called. Okay? And that's the ones that's grafted in that come under his name and they do that through the Mashiach because the Mashiach comes in the Father's name saith Yahuwah who does all these things that's who does all these things that's what it just said verse 18 known unto the mighty one are all his works from the beginning of the world verse 19 therefore my judgment is, this is again James speaking, brother of Yahushua, head of the Sanhedrin, that we trouble not, or we, put, we don't start them out this way, that we trouble them not, which from among the nations are turning, and your King James it says turned, look in your greens interlinear, and then find the Strong's Concordance number, you'll find that word is turning, to Theon, turning to the Most High. They haven't fully turned. They're just starting to. So they don't. he says, don't put the whole law on them before they're convicted to do it. But that we, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, not eat things that are sacrificed to idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. That's, what we're, that's the starting point. Verse 21 tells you why they have that starting point. For Moshe, and he's talking about the Torah, because he's the lawgiver, of old time hath in every city them that preach him, talking about the Torah, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So that says a couple of things. They're meeting on every Sabbath day. The Gentiles are meeting with them. The Greeks are meeting with the Jews. And they're all doing that but when they first are turning to the most high they don't tell they don't have to keep the whole law they don't understand it they don't know what applies to them they don't this is all we start them with verse 22 then this pleased and this pleased the apostles and elders with the whole congregation to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas Namely, Yehuda, surnamed Barnabas. Okay, so that's telling you Barnabas is the one he sent with him. And Silas, leading men among the brethren. Verse 23, And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and the elders and the brethren, 
send greetings unto the brethren which are of the nations in Antioch and Syria and in Celica. Verse 24. For, for this reason, as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. Talking about trying to get them to be uh, circumcised to be saved instead of accepting the Messiah coming under that shed blood and then as they're convicted to keep the law. Okay? Unsettling your, you, your souls or you individuals, saying you must be circumcised and keep the whole Torah to whom we gave no such commandment. Now, they don't do that right off the bat. They don't know that. They don't understand any of that. And the law of God doesn't apply to them, nor indeed can it. it. It only matters if you keep the law if you're convicted to do it. If not, it's dirty rags, okay? Just like anything else. You have to be convicted to be pleasing the Most High. When you get convicted, keep the law. Then 25, it seemed good unto us being assembled with one purpose to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Shaul, men that have risked their lives for the name of our master Yahushua the Mashiach, or the Anointed One. 27, we have sent therefore Yehuda and Silas, who shall also tell you the same thing face to face. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things to start with. Okay? Should have had that in there, to start with. Verse 21, that they abstained from the meats offered to idols, that's what it was talking about back there as I said, and from blood, drinking of blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves you should do well very well to you now things strangled are talking about things that die on their own they just lost their breath and died that's why it's, you don't eat things that are strangled there's no such thing as saying that you know if i went out and i killed one of my chickens by strangling it that wouldn't mean i couldn't eat it it's talking about things that die of all their self verse 30 so when they were dismissed they came to antioch and when they had gathered the group together they delivered the letter Verse 31, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the encouragement. Verse 32, and Yehudas, Yehuda and Silas, being prophets or teachers also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed what they said. Verse 33, and after they had stayed there a, a, a little while, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to, to stay there still a while. Then 35, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of Elohim with many others also. And some days later, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of Elohim, and so and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them Johann, whose surname was Mark. We've mentioned been mentioned several times here. But Paul thought not good or didn't agree to take him with them, who deserted them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was very sharp or very big between them. And they separated and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed into Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and departed being strength uh, being committed by the brethren unto the grace of Theoe or Elohim verse 41 and he went through Syria and in Celica and strengthened the congregations the ecclesias okay Chapter 16. Then came to he then he came to Derby and in Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish, a Jewess is what they have, okay? Was a woman of the Yehudim. 
and believed. But his father was a Greek. Now this is important. Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Listeria and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Yehudim which were in those quarters for they knew all that his father knew all that his father was a Greek. Now, Timothy didn't get circum didn't uh, didn't get uh, salvation from being circumcised. He went and got circumcised because of his salvation, and that's what you have to remember because he had already come under the Mashiach. Okay, and he chose to be circumcised. Paul didn't force him, but he he's the one that circumcised him. Verse four: If he didn't, he'd be the big hypocrite, wouldn't he? And he, and he wasn't, believe me. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordered of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem, which is again, abstaining from things that were, you know, that were sacrificed to idols and from blood and from things that died of themselves and from fornication. Okay? That's what they're talking about when they said that there. That's where they begin. That's not where they end as you can obviously see by Timothy being circumcised. Yeah, okay. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decree, it will be read that again, for to keep that were ordained or ordered of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the, the congregations established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now, that's where they were started from. They were established on that. That didn't mean that they didn't keep the Torah because that makes no sense with everything in the Bible. And believe me, that's not true. Verse 6. Now when they had gone throughout Perga, Perga and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. So the Holy Spirit spoke to them, told them not to go into Asia and teach the, teach the uh, gospel or the bazaar. Verse 7, after they were come to Mysra, they uh, were trying to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit per didn't permit them. Verse 8, and they, pass and they passing by Masseria came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Shaul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed uh, and, and spoke to him, saying, I said pray to him. That's talking about ask him. Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, concluding that Yahuwah had called us for to preach the bazaar or the gospel unto them. For this reason, setting sail from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothelakia, and I know I didn't pronounce that correct, and the next day to Nepal, Nepalus, verse 12, and from there to Philippi, which is the, the leading city of, the, of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and, were, and we were in that city staying several days, verse 13, and on the Sabbath, the seventh day, it has never changed, we went out of the city by the river side where prayer was uh get, where was was the accustomed to was accustomed to be made and we went down and spake unto the woman which gathered there the women that gathered there and a certain woman named Lydia a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira which worshiped Theon, the Most High, heard us whose heart the, 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 the Most High opened, and she paid attention unto the things which were spoken of Shaul. And when she was baptized, and her household and, and her family with her, she besought us, saying, or asked us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Most High, to Theon, Come to my house or to my family, come to where I abode and stay there. And she prevailed, 
or she, she had convinced them. Verse 16, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, and a certain young woman, possessed with, the, with a spirit of divination, or a demon, met us, which brought her masters much fortune-telling, oh no, much profit by fortune-telling. So the young lady was a fortune teller and she was possessed by a demon. That tells you about fortune tellers, doesn't it? The same followed Shaul and us and cried or spoke loudly saying, These men are the servants of the Most High Elohim. Okay? The Most High Elohim. Which show, show unto us the way of salvation. And this, day, and this did she many days but Shaul, being troubled, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Yahushua, the Mashiach, or the Anointed One, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their prophets was gone, they caught Shaul and Silas and drew them into the town square unto the rulers. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Yehud, uh, of the Yehudim, do exceedingly stir up our city. Verse 21, And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. So what do you think they were teaching them? The Torah. See what I'm saying? That's what they're saying is not lawful for them to know. They didn't start out with that, but they did teach them the Torah. Verse 22, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them there safely, who having, not, in other words, not letting them to escape, who having received such a command, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet secure in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to the Most High, to Theon, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's uh, stocks and chains and things were off or loosed. Verse 27, And the keeper of the prison woke up out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out, of it, drew out his sword and when, would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are here. We are all here. Then he called for a light and rushed in, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Shaul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Mashiach, I mean on the Master, Yahushua the Mashiach, and you will be saved and all your family. And he's that's quoting John 3.16 and 2, 8 through 9. Now you, that's your starting point, believing on Yahushua, because he's the sacrifice and he's the one that you gain the spirit is because of him you know and that's why you get it when you accept the messiah then the holy spirit comes on you as it did the messiah verse 33 and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their lash wounds and was baptized he and all his and all his family immediately verse 34 and when he had brought them into his house he sat down to food before them and rejoiced, believing in the Mighty One with all his family. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the sergeant, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this, saying to Shaul, The magistrates have sent word to let you go. Now, for this reason, leave and go in peace. But, Paul, but Shaul said unto them, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned being, beaten us openly, having not been condemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now they thrust us out secretly. 
No, truly, but let them come themselves and bring us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans, and they came and begged them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart or leave out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Stop here. Or start here. And this is this will be part five. Okay, part five. So we're going to stop there. And this is part five. Start here. Okay. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, please do so. Again, it costs you nothing. We are not going to ask you for money. Okay? If you, once you subscribe, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube and then share it on your Facebook page, please. And then hit that notification bell so you can get notified of our next video. May Yahuwah bless until we meet again. I'm getting up a little better, but still slow. <laughs>